I have to hold it? Yeah, you gotta hold it, bro. Yeah. You don't think you just get on chocolate? Don't be afraid of that. You have to jump through hoops. You gotta jump through the hoops. That's one of them. Okay, thank you. I want to reenact the when you guys put it on. Like what? What do you make? Right. What is you got this on place? in Sam's office, right? Kind of. Kind of. Yeah, well, it's more from. official in here, dude. Can you show them? Do you want to be a part of that group photo? <laughs> yeah. You could be a part of that. Yeah, the arrow's pointing at you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Welcome back to Epically Latered. Um, this year marks the 20th anniversary of Chocolate Skateboards, which is a sub-brand of girl skateboards. And I wanted to um, do an episode, go through the history, meet with a lot of the skaters that I've never interviewed for this show. And I thought one of my good friends, Jerry Sue, who's also a friend of the show and Vice Magazine, he just got on chocolate. I wanted him to take us through what he thinks is right about chocolate. And Jerry and I, we went up to San Francisco, met up with Chico Brenes, met up with Mark Johnson, Kenny Anderson, and even some of the new guys. And so this is it, Chocolate Skateboards 20th anniversary episode. Hope you enjoy it. I want to try. I'll try this one. Cool. Is it the shape you read? It's pretty close. I read Mark's board. I've been writing Mark's board lately, but it looks... I think that might Just be like it. Might That's be the G28 or something? Yeah. Yeah, we knocked that off. So. This is it. Oh, wait. My name's on this. That's you. Oh. We put I think that that's shape? probably why. Oh. Because you write that shape. Oh. Well, that makes that sense. <laughs> <laughs> cool. You just feel an immediate cool, you know, like welcome. You know, this, everyone's like, just welcome to the family, you know, type thing. And all of a sudden you're just looking at chocolate boards and then you're looking at chocolate boards with your name on it. It's like a dream come true. You know, all these boards, your name's next to Mark Johnson, Gino Iannucci, Chico. You're heroes. I couldn't have imagined that this would happen, that I'd be setting up these boards. My board on the wall next to them, same company. You know, like that's crazy. Girl was started as like just to make a company that everyone wanted to skate at you know make a company that was i guess a few different things one that you weren't embarrassed by that was fun also just to sort of you know have build a future you know for the team but i think all, you know overall we were kind of all just you know just not feeling world anymore and you know i was making videos there and rick and mike skated for plan b and you know everyone else was on you know different companies blind or 101 or whatever it was but all those guys were skating together and so it just sort of seemed natural and so we taught you know we decided to you know just start our own thing yeah they weren't happy there and i remember when that was going on tim gavin and eric costin lived together they had an apartment in hollywood and that was pretty much like the hangout every weekend you know but like only a certain few dudes would go into like tim's room or costin's room and they would close the door and i'd be there like what the fuck why'd they do that what are they talking about but i i guess they're just talking about like you know how a girl's gonna start or whatever, you know what I mean? When the first time I heard that they were doing girl, I mean it was it was through Tim Gavin. It was like, yeah, we're gonna they're gonna do this new company, you know, this is the name and this is the people who are gonna be on it. And he started going down the list and I remember towards the end of the list I was waiting for my name and it just never came and I was just like, shit, like whatever, you know, just stoked for them but bummed that I that my name didn't come up whatever because I we was everybody was so tight. And then girl got started, and I remember I was just I just started writing their boards. At the time, I was still riding for world, but girl had been sending me stuff, and I kind of slipped up. I had, uh, was riding a girl board at the skate park, and Kareem seen it. He got mad. He focused my board. <laughs> it was like here, like <laughs> so. <laughs> and so they kind of knew, like, oh, he's about to, you know, move like the other guys. From when girls started to when chocolate started, they, they didn't even wait a whole year to start a whole other board company. They were just like, fuck it, let's grab these guys too. I mean, I think girl was such a, there were so many people that they just couldn't take everybody they initially wanted to take, probably. And I think a lot of it had to do with just being naive and thinking they could just pull it off, because if they probably knew better, they might not have done it, you know? I think it was the beginning summer of 93, 
and we already knew we were starting girls so we we set up a tour and we kind of like set it up with the dudes who knew who, who we knew were going to be on girl we were all still on the world before we quit we all got in the van everyone's going on the trip and then chico was there with his bags hoping to come with us and he, you know there's just no room in the van so when we drove off just seeing him in the rear view just sitting there with his bags you know it's kind of a sad feeling like leaving him behind so I think, yeah, from there on out, we kind of knew we wanted to do something later, if, if possible. And then when it came to it, they're like, you know what, it's time to do it. And then they did chocolate and brought Chico, Paulo, Gabriel, myself. I think York gone on like a couple months later, and then Daniel, and then Ben, and Shamil. I remember it went down like Richard Mulder was like, hey, dude, I quit world. Like, I'm out of there, you know? I was like, what? What are you doing? He's like, oh yeah, all of us quit and we're gonna ride for a, uh, for like, for girl or something, you know? Like chocolate wasn't even a name yet. I wanted to be on more, not because it was the cool company and it was chocolate, because it was nothing yet. It was actually gonna be called Sister, you know? So I wanna be my friends. The story goes that someone uh, trademarked that name before we were able to, because they heard we were gonna name it that. What, like an enemy? I guess you could call him an enemy since I think we were taking a lot of his riders. I guess Rocco heard that, got the jump on it, and copywrote the name Sister, so they couldn't use it. It just became chocolate and just created its own image from there. I don't think it was very thought out or anything. It seemed like the girl team came out of like Plan B, and Plan B was like the elite team for World Industries, you know, so the girl guys were the elites. The chocolate guys are the up-and-comer young talent, you know, and, and obviously with chocolate too, most of us were Hispanic, you know, and then we had Shamil, he was a black guy in uh, York, you know, we can make, we can call him a Latin too. <laughs> um, so, you know, it was just like uh, chocolate was the new young, young talent coming up. From the whole chocolate squad, I probably knew Chico before I knew Ben Sanchez and Shamil and those dudes like that, because I would go to Embarcadero and we would see each other every weekend. Embarcadero was the key. Like, I met everyone through, I never traveled, they traveled, all the big pros would travel there. I wish I could find the, the, the little t dog traps that, that used to be here. They used to be like these little wobbly, it's like a little square, but you can see like out of towners pushing fast, like towards Embarcadero or whatever. And you can see it like, oh, he's about to hit the t dog trap and his wheel will get caught inside of there and he <laughs> would just go flying, dude. So this one, when we were skating the stairs, we knew we always knew where it was, you know what I mean? But it was this thing, your wheel would just get caught perfectly, man, and people would just go flying. It was hard for people just to like kind of come in, you know, people from out of town were intimidated, especially by like all the locals, you know, you will get vibe really hard if somebody didn't know you. Or if you would try to, people would try to sell something and you didn't buy it, it was best for you to buy it and be trying to become friends like that. Because if you didn't buy it, you're pretty much you know, out of here. There was people, you know, trying to come over here and because they knew it was a hot spot to try to make it, you know. There were so many good people out here that we weren't even, it was, you know, I mean, we weren't even tripping, man, and, you know. It, it was, this was heaven, man. This was heaven for us. Uh, and I lived here for 25 years plus since I came from Nicaragua. Wait, you said this was your mom's house? This is my mom's house, yeah. Still and is? Still is. Um, I wasn't sure if this was like your furniture. <laughs> yeah, this is my funky furniture right here. Did you guys have citizenship or did you just sneak over? Or how uh, did no, I came here legally. How old were you when you moved from Nicaragua? I was about nine years old. My mom was living here already came here to get surgery, she, she got shot during the Civil War in Nicaragua and there was nothing else they can do over there. She flew here. But me, my brother and sister, they, we came illegally, my grandma, my aunt and my uncle, and we took the bus across uh, all Central America, all the way to Mexico. And then when we got to Mexico, we ended up paying a coyote to get us across. 
the coyote just knew where to go. He would just stop right here, you know, he would know everything like, you know, there would be like a helicopter lights flashing and he would be just hiding under bushes and everything. Okay, run, 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 let's go. One time we had to stop a border patrol and a, and a horse. The dude got off the horse, the horse was smoking, taking a piss, relaxing, we were just like quiet as hell, like in the bushes, just hiding. You know, he took off like 30 minutes later and we just booked it, you know, like a group of people. And went to, got into San Diego and then um, took a plane from there to San Francisco and then I just went straight to Embarcadero and it was over. History, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Mikey used to live up the street like seven houses away. They had the mini ramp and everything with Greg. I would go over there and just after school um, skate that thing. And we used to go to the same middle school, Ben Franklin, down the street. <clears throat> we used to take the bus together and get off at the same stop. And we would go in front of my house and like wrestle. And we would do that every single day. And we'd just start wrestling around, playing around, I'll throw him around, you know. He would just go home crying, you know. <laughs> no. hey, which one of you were in the skating first? He was into skating before me. Chigo is like so amazing. I think he shows like what he enjoys to do, but the dude can do everything. Filming gnarly video parts and smooth style, and he's always had that style, you know? I think that's what made like his stuff dope. The first time I ever was introduced to his skating was uh, in Love Child. Love Child was one of the first videos that I ever saw. You know, at that time, like not too many skaters had like such a good, smooth, clean style, and Chico's like really stood out. I only kind of knew what chocolate was when it kind of like was chocolate. Like the Paco video, it was like the introduction to chocolate. Las Nueve Vidas? Yeah. Do you remember yeah. filming that? Yeah, I remember filming that, man. It was crazy that we were gonna go out San Bernardino somewhere and film it, and I was just like, what? This is crazy. Like, and when we got there, it was just like a full-on movie set, like makeup and take one, take this, you know. Nine Lives to Paco, that's how you say it in English. <laughs> I didn't know that that was the name of the video. Yeah. You know, it was full location kit, and like Spike had like a makeup artist there, and like we all got into our costumes. I think we filmed all the skits in like a whole weekend. We were all pretty drunk when we were doing it, I think. We were all young. Yeah, it was fun, man. It was pretty cool. I remember like thinking it was gonna be mellow, you know, and I was like, fuck, dude, they're going all out for this shit. I remember like Carol was like pretty nervous to be on camera, so he was like pounding strawberry boons to kind of like get the nerve to be on camera, even though he probably didn't have to say anything, but it was like two long days for sure. And there was like a fire pit scene where it was like dudes were, it was just like, they were just breathing smoke for like an hour and a half off this, this fire. Podría matar esos hombres de la ley fácilmente y sus botas con sangre. Was there a script? There was a script, but they just kind of told us, like, do this. And we just, you know, because the whole thing was in Spanish, and the right. Spanish was really bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like, you know, and... Did you say the lines in Spanish? I said some lines. I think Socrates might have said some, Rudy might have said some lines, <laughs> and they just hired somebody to say some lines, but it was just like, you couldn't even understand it. <laughs> I don't think we worked that hard on the story or the plot. <laughs> I think it was like just sort of, you know, like it was just fun all being out there. I think it was cool. Everyone, you know, got into it. Get up, you fool. We're going to have to drag you some more. All right, then. Let's drag him some more. Yeah. Spike, he's come a long way for sure, you know, and then to see, hear his name being called on, you know, Academy Awards and stuff like that. I'm like, man, this guy is doing big things, you know, that's, a, that's, that's awesome, you know, all the props to him. and what he's done, you know? But I mean, I think we were just sort of tr trying to like give chocolate its own thing. And like, I mean, the original chocolate team, there's some amazing styles, you know, Gabriel and his, his style versus Paolo and the fact that they grew up together and skated in the same neighborhood, but skated so different. And I remember Paolo was the first one I really saw do sw big switch ollies and big nollies. You know, it's like there's always a, a time where like somebody shows up and just takes it to the next level. And I think Paulo took it to the next level in a, in a bunch of ways. He was in his own world, but he was dope. We used to call him Nalo, actually. <laughs> you know, he'd nollie over his bicycle. 
But yeah, Apollo, I say he had one of the most creative style, but wow. But it, it, it was good though. I actually started skating Switch before I even knew what Switch was. Even not because, because I was trying to invent Switch tricks, but because just my legs, just the way I think, you know, I saw my leg, one was stronger than the other one. So that's how I started pushing Switch and just, just do like, like cruising so I could learn how to skate backwards. So when nollies actually started becoming in style, I just knew how to nollie. Oh, skating with Paulo, you know, and you just get that, you know, that rhythm flowing again, and he's, this guy's doing just like everything like that, like that. And I'm talking about just cr the craziest, like, switch ollies over tables, like, you know, nollying over whatever's in the way. He's the, the king of nollies. Our first chocolate tour was in 1994. I felt like Gabriel was like, yeah, respect. Like, he's the coolest dude ever. But he was definitely like, dude, I looked up to, like, this is Gabriel. Like, from 101 Skateboards, like, from the PAL days. So I was like, wow. So to see him come out in that chocolate video with the last part, just tail slide at the courthouse over those steps. Like, he was doing some, some sick stuff. You get to really see Gabriel Rodriguez. Dude, we were all just street dogs, like, dope street skating, you know? Didn't, we didn't need much but just the streets to just skate and do, you know, a small curb and, you know, or a picnic table. You know, a lot of it was even just done on a picnic table, you know? So that's what we were doing back then. We were just like, it was just raw dog, like dope street skating, you know? Chocolate was a little bit more just like grimy, you know, it was just dudes that were just in the streets doing whatever. You know, it was more style based, I felt like. Like chocolate's almost, it's almost like what James Brown is to soul music. It was just more like style and just flamboyant and just, these are just raw, you know. 